COVID-19 has created difficulties for women's shelters across the country, if not across the world, as domestic violence continued or in many cases increased during the pandemic, while services had to shift to an online format. Here for a local look at that effect, we have Jennifer Gauthier from Women's Place South Niagara. Welcome to the program, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me here today. Looking at some of the statistics, we've noticed that during phase one of the pandemic, there was actually a decrease in calls, but phase two, there was an increase across the country. Is that what Women's Place of South Niagara experienced? That's exactly what we experienced at Women's Place of South Niagara. During the first wave of COVID-19, things went really quiet at the shelter, which made us really concerned for the safety of women and children, wondering if they were able to reach out. Uh, so we quickly launched tech support lines so that women could reach out to us. And then throughout the summer and now into the second wave, we've been at our overcapacity and seeing an increase in calls. How have you handled that overcapacity situation? At times we've had to access uh, the local hotels to try and keep women with lower safety risks um, safe but out of their homes and looking at out of region or other options, trying not to turn anyone away. That's something that I've seen through the statistics as well, is that it's over 60% of shelters across Canada have had to use local hotels. Yeah, everybody's looking for innovative ways to meet the needs of women because the severity and the incidences of abuse have increased during the pandemic. So really, that's what we're here to do is to keep women and children safe. So we want to make sure that we're doing that. And I know speaking to many of the executive directors across Ontario that we're at, they're accessing hotels or Airbnbs trying to find space for women. Another statistic that I noticed, 52% have experienced different, even more violent cases of domestic violence. Interestingly enough, speaking locally to one of our other partner shelters, a lot of us saw an increase in strangulation at the beginning of a shelter or at the beginning of the pandemic. And that's very concerning. Strangulation is like the number one indicator of lethality. Uh, so, so that's scary. So an increase in the severity of physical abuse is something we've seen throughout the pandemic. Jennifer, you have two shelters. You have Nova House and you have Serenity Place. Yes. One is a 10 bed, one is a 20 bed. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. And did you have to change the way your intake happened? Was there, did you have to reduce the number of people in those shelters during this time? Uh, well, really, we had to change the way we delivered all of our services uh, just so that we could maintain physical distancing. So we do receive funding to operate 30 beds, but often we were up to 40. So 10 beds that we aren't able to use right now because of capacity issues. So we're, our numbers are actually down. So we are only offering 30 beds uh, to the community right now when typically we would offer 40. And so out of those 30 beds, some of them are being housed still in hotels? Right now, thankfully, we're not able to do that. It just depends on the structure of the, if, but if there's a lot of children coming into the shelter, it increases our numbers and our need for physical distancing. And that's when we look to the hotels and things like that. Is the holiday season typically a time where domestic violence continues to increase? Holidays put a lot of stressors on families. Often we see a quiet period over the holiday itself. People often try to maintain their relationships during the holiday season for the children and for their families. And then right in January, we see a significant spike in our calls and the number of people wanting to come into shelter. That's very distressing. It is, it's something that we sort of monitor every year, the cycles of abuse. And so we prepare uh, for those cases. And we're wondering if that's gonna be even worse this year, given the overlay of COVID-19. Can we look a little bit at fundraising? Because a lot of your special events had to be either canceled fully or moved to an online format. You're, you're not out there in the community promoting, collecting money to help your cause. Yeah, that's a big challenge for us and for all other charities right now. We've had to cancel all three of our signature events. Uh, so we have the a Brunch, Bid and Bowl, we have a Walk Against Violence, and we also have our Book Riot, which is our biggest and fundraiser. And that's a really popular fundraiser. Yeah, yeah, so we had to cancel all of that during this year. And we're looking into next year as well because we don't know when it's going to be okay for large groups to gather. Uh, so that creates a lot of financial hardships for the shelter. We're 70% funded uh, by the ministry and we rely on community support for 30% of our operations funding. And most of that's raised through our events. 
so we've been looking to pivot to online platforms. We recently did a, a monthly calendar draw, uh, but looking at new and innovative ways and to get support from the community. We are very thankful for the support um, that has come in during the pandemic. The people of Niagara are very generous and uh, yeah, we're grateful. What are some of the ideas that you have moving forward into 2021? Right now, we're going to look at creating a strategic fundraising plan to look at new and innovative ways to raise funds. We're not sure what that's going to look like and how to move things online. Our book riot's not really something we can move online for the amount, the volume of books that we have, it would be really difficult. So looking at doing um, like 50-50 draws or continued calendars or different ways that we can raise funds. And we've had a lot of third party events that have been really supportive to us. So like Shoppers Drug Mart did a campaign for us and, and that's been helpful. You have a third party event coming up, a musician, December 12th, is that correct? I'm not sure. I, I saw it on your website today, December 12th, Sarah Rose, who normally does a busking fundraiser outside of Sobeys. Okay, yeah, so she is pivoting her event this year. Usually she does the busking event and it's very popular and she raises funds for us every year. So she's looking at changing her, her approach this year. Like many people are, we had a fundraiser uh, a couple of months ago that is a lip sync battle. And typically that's a live event, but they did it online this year. And it was really interesting because they were actually able to reach a lot of larger audience. So there are new opportunities that we're learning during the pandemic to broaden our scope and, and how we raise funds. So these are smaller fundraisers, but people love to step up and help out. Exactly. And we're so grateful that they do that. So if anybody is interested in doing a third party event for any charity in Niagara, I'm sure the information's all on their websites and people can sign up to see how they can help. Thank you very much for joining us yeah, today, Jennifer. Thank you. And uh, can you give us our, our your website uh, one time so that people who want to contact you, people who want to do one of these events or donate some money? Can yes, find out how. absolutely. So our website is www.womensplacesn.org. And you can find all of our information there, including our 24-7 support line if you or someone you know uh, needs help. Thank you so much. Thank you.